Our top story on paper, India has banned manual scavenging, the horrible practice of men and women cleaning sewers and sanitary pits with their hands. That law was passed nine years ago and uh, authorities say it is to ensure no one is employing manual scavengers. Yet this morning, India woke up to a grim but familiar headline, four men death while cleaning a sewer. Ravi Kumar, 24, Ravi Golda, 25, Vishal, 24, and Rohit Kumar, 23. This time, it was in the suburb of Faridabad, just outside Delhi. NDTV's Vedant Agarwal travelled there to separate facts from reality. <laughs> Grief, anger and despair in Faridabad. These are the families of the four men killed in toxic chambers of an underground tank of a local hospital. This is the sewer pit where the tragic incident happened. Who takes accountability for the death of these four men? Well, in the course of our investigation, the hospital management said that this is not a sewer pit at all, it's a rainwater chamber, which means they're either lying or owning up to a case of negligence where the hospital did not realize that there are toxic gases present inside the pit. The families say the men were regularly hired by a Delhi-based agency, Santushti Allied Services, contracted by the hospital to clean their tanks. But... Vishal's brother says this time the work was far more dangerous than the past and that they were given no safety equipment. knowledge <laughs> मेंटेनेंस डिपार्टमेंट से फोन आया है उन्होंने यूं बोला है कि जी चार लड़के भेज दो क्योंकि जिसमें बेसिकली तीन लड़के जाते हैं हर बारी ठीक है आज उन्होंने चार लड़के हमने सोचा कि भाई कोई एक्स्ट्रा काम होगा इनको कि सर कुछ काम है कोई नहीं थोड़ा सा फालतू काम कराना है ये बेसिक नहीं बताया उन्होंने कि हां ये काम ही करवाना उनको हॉस्पिटल ने ये चीज ठेकेदारों को बताई नहीं बताई सालों से तो नहीं कर रहे कभी-कभार चले जाते थे पर वहां पे कुछ और काम बताया था कि कुछ और काम करना है पर उन्होंने सीवर का काम कराया जो उसमें लोग लोग चले गए चारों के चारों इसके पहले क्या काम करते थे वो इसका पहले सफाई का काम करते थे इसके पहले कभी सीवर वगैरह के अंदर या मैनहोल के अंदर नहीं भेजे नहीं नहीं कभी नहीं गए उन्होंने हमारे साथ चीटिंग करी है उन्होंने कुछ किन्होंने हॉस्पिटल वालों ने या फिर जो एजेंसी वाले जो ठेकेदार था उसने ठेकेदार ने चीटिंग करी है हां कुछ और काम करवाना था पर उनसे कुछ और काम करवाया तो ठीक उन्होंने भी करी है दोनों ने करी है द फैमिली से इट्स ओनली आफ्टर दे प्रोटेस्टेड दैट द पुलिस हैज बुक द हॉस्पिटल एंड द एजेंसी दैट हायर्ड दीस मेन फॉर मर्डर एज वेल एज अंडर द एससी एसटी एक्ट since the men were from the Dalit community. QRG hospital is from there, have you ever asked them to ask them? Yes, we have asked them to ask them to give them a tender and to give them a tender. And this is clear that without any protective equipment, they were inside? Yes. This is clear that without any protective equipment, they were inside? Yes. And this was 10-12 feet deep sewer? Yes, absolutely. But already attempts to evade blame. Ravi Kumar is from the hospital officials. But already attempts to evade blame. Hospital officials, reluctant to come on camera, say that the pit where the men died was a rainwater chamber and not a septic tank. The medical superintendent of the ORG hospital in Faridabad, who says, and I quote, this is not a sewer tank where we asked them to go. It is a rain chamber. There is supposed to be no gas. But the stink at the pit where the men died tells its own story. The company which hired these men claim they are not to blame. They say the men were not provided safety gear since they were never contracted to do risky work like entering sewers and that the hospital was meant to ensure the safety of the men. But NDTV accessed the contract between the hospital and the agency which clearly says that they provide sewer pit cleaning services and that they have the machines and cleaning equipment to do the job. Contrary to the claims in the contract, the families say the company would pick up these men as daily workers. No contract, no safeguards.
for a pittance of less than 500 rupees a day. की दिहाड़ी लगती थी कभी नहीं भी लगती थी लगती थी ये दिहाड़ी बेस पे थे पर डे इन्हें साढ़े चार सौ रुपये मिलते थे और छोटे छोटे सीवर खुलाए जाते थे लेकिन ये जो सीवर खुलाया गया है ये हॉस्पिटल की लापरवाही के वजह से This tragic incident is a reminder of how the most disadvantaged communities have to bear the brunt of such humiliation and also how after the death neither the contractors nor the hospital authorities in this case are ready to take accountability in faridabad with camera person sushil rathi vedant 20 tv Samples of the cough syrups that have been linked by the World Health Organization to the deaths of dozens of children in the Gambia have been sent for tests the health ministry said underlining that the products were made only for export and not actually sold in India four drugs have been sent for testing to a laboratory the results will guide future course of action WHO has today issued a medical product alert for four contaminated medicines identified in the Gambia that have been potentially linked with acute kidney injuries and 66 deaths among children. The four medicines are cough and cold syrups produced by Maiden Pharmaceuticals Limited in India. The loss of these young lives is beyond heartbreaking. for their families WHO is conducting further investigation with the company and regulatory authorities in India The Indian government has said that these drugs may have been contaminated with uh, glycol or ethyl ethylene uh, glycol we spoke to doctors about this and doctors said that these chemicals are not used in uh, medicines at all they've never been used in medicines they are industrial chemicals uh, chemicals in fact this is a solvent that's used in antifreeze and brake fluids and dyes etc so that is why the doctors we were speaking to they were telling us that it is a high probability that these entered these drugs through contaminated water so it was not not a, a salt uh, defect these the salt being used in these cough syrups are something that are used in others as well but the defect was in manufacturing it wasn't clean manufacturing now the government has said that the exact one to one causal relationship of the death is not yet provided by the world health organization the government has raised certain questions to who that is there any specific linked link saying that the 66 deaths are directly and exclusively linked to the cough syrups that's uh, something that the who has not replied on yet Now uh it, another question that's important for all of us and what is a concern for all of us is that were these drugs available in India well the official responses that we have till now and even the pharmaceuticals and drugs that we and doctors that we checked with all point to the same thing that they've been only sold in Gambia they've only been exported and they've not been sold in India in fact if we also talk about the license the drug controller of Haryana had given them the license to produce only to import uh, to uh, other countries and not to sell in our country In other news on Dasra day a group of people participating in a Dasra procession allegedly forcefully broke open the lock of a madrasa in the Bidar district of Karnataka and began chanting Jai Shri Ram and other slogans the Bidar police uh, have said they've now registered an FIR against nine people but no arrest made so far Shrija joining us with the latest on that Shrija this was uh, a protected monument Well that's right in fact uh, it was built in uh, 1460s in fact uh, the Mohammad Gawan Madrasa in Bida it comes under the archaeological survey of India in fact the structure also is a heritage one and is also under the list of the monuments of national importance and what we understand is that we see this is a huge procession that is carried out especially uh, by you know several of the hindu activists were also involved but also several of the common man were also involved and that is the confirmation that's coming in from the be the police to ndtv in fact we also understand that the mob participating in this particular procession for dasara allegedly broke into this particular heritage madrasa in the the district of karnataka they shouted slogans and also performed the puja in the corner of the building the police has registered a case against nine people but so far no arrests have been made yet all right thanks very much uh, shrija for joining us with those details meanwhile uh, kerala's uh, chief minister 
Pinaray Vijayan has slammed Rashtra Swayam Sevak Sangh Chief Mohan Bhagwat's call for a broad population control policy that uh, is applied to all. Uh, now, Mohan Bhagwat has said it should be applied irrespective of religious differences, but Mr. Vijayan has termed uh, Mohan Bhagwat's statement as Islamophobic and patently anti minority. <laughs> वो सब पर समान रूप से लागू हो एक बार बनने के बाद किसी को छूट न मिले और समाज इसको स्वीकार करने कर ले इसलिए उसके लिए मन बनाकर उसको लाया जाए इसकी आवश्यकता है क्योंकि फिर से समाज में अगर उसको नहीं माना तो नीति क्या करेगी Meanwhile, uh, the Bharat Jodo Yatra continues through Karnataka and today Sonia Gandhi joined Rahul Gandhi on that uh, Yatra. It is interesting that uh, Rahul Gandhi also ran with uh, Sidharamaya. Um, and this is day 27 of the 150-day Bharat Jodo Yatra. Day 27 of 150 days Yatra led by Rahul. Congress's Yatra clocked 698 kilometers of 3,570 kilometers. Rahul Gandhi lacing up his mother's shoes. As the top Congress leaders bootstrapped the party through its 3,570 kilometer long Bharat Jodo Yatra. The moment went viral especially within the Congress, with the party's handle simply tweeting, Ma, while others were more effusive. We are all preoccupied with, with Bharat Jodo Yatra. I would urge upon my friends in NDTV who are known for their fairness to look at what Shri Rahul Gandhi is fighting Finally, for. Thank you. Know. you. This is Congress President Sonia Gandhi's first road campaign since 2016. The last time was a road show in Varanasi where she sustained a shoulder injury. Mrs. Gandhi walked for just about 10 minutes, recovering from COVID and due to health complications. Sonia Gandhi, the Congress interim president, has arrived here in Mandya district of Karnataka for the first time. In fact, uh, uh, you know, you're seeing the senior Gandhi taking part in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. For the first time, it's entering the BJP ruled state. Karnataka Chief Minister Basraj Bomai said that Sonia walking the Yatra makes no impact. The state votes next summer for a new government. Naturally, all party leaders work for their own party. And she has walked for a half kilometer and gone. Uh, it's okay. I mean, as far as we are concerned, it doesn't make any impact. Definitely, it inspires the workers of the party and it makes impact on the people of Karnataka, it will be an added strength to the Congress party. No, it is not in the election agenda. The Congress party is struggling to bounce back. Since 2014, under the leadership of Sonia Gandhi, the Congress lost two Lok Sabha elections and 39 out of 49 assembly elections held between 2014 and 2022. What we are looking at at the point in time here is where Mr. Rahul Gandhi is walking the Yatra side by side with uh, Venu Gopal. We also see D.K. Shivkumar and uh, Siddharamaya as well. Remember D.K. Shivkumar and Siddharamaya have been the face to face, the CM face for uh, you know the upcoming Congress elections in Mandya with Kumar Sridhar for NDTV. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal today suggested to Lieutenant Governor V.K. Saxena to ease up on the scolding and the quote-unquote love letters and chill a little. He tweeted in Hindi saying, as much as LG Saab scolds me every day, even my wife does not. In the last six months, my wife has not written me as many love letters as LG Saab has. LG Saab, chill a little and also tell your super boss to chill a little. This tweet comes a day after Manish Sisodia accused in a liquor scam probe by central agencies, sent a stinging letter to the lieutenant governor appointed by the BJP-run centre. 
there's been a scam of 6,000 crores in BJP-run municipal bodies, but you don't see that because the BJP is involved. The big international story, anti-hijab protests now going viral, not just in Iran, where thousands of women and uh, young students have come out onto the streets, but also global solidarity now with Iranian women as women chop their hair in defiance of Iranian law. From European Union politicians to French film stars, a massive wave of online support for Iranian women as uh, schoolgirls in that country are now chanting anti-regime slogans, even booing government officials. <laughs> Until Iran is free, our fury will be bigger than the oppressors. Until the women of Iran are free, we are going to stand with you. Jian, Jian, Azadi, women, life, freedom. A top EU lawmaker cutting her hair during this speech in the European Parliament on Tuesday. In solidarity with the massive protests in Iran, after the alleged torture and murder of a 22-year-old woman, Mahasa Amini, three weeks ago by the country's morality police. Her crime, not covering her hair in public. We are going to stand with you. The EU Gian, lawmakers' protest Gian. came a day after Oscar-winning French actors and other French film stars filmed themselves chopping off locks of their hair a symbol of protest and mourning in Iran since ancient times. The video, hashtag Hair for Freedom, has gone viral. In Iran, the protests against the death of Mahasa Amini continue. This dramatic video, viral on social media, purportedly shows Iranian schoolgirls chasing a man out of a school compound while shouting shameless at him. The girls, many of them without their mandatory hijab or headscarf, are also seen throwing objects at the man, possibly an education official. The incident reportedly took place at a high school near Tehran on Monday. The protests are dominated by women and girls, but also have men joining, in what is being seen as the biggest challenge to government rule in Iran in years. While there's a clampdown on the internet, social media sites have been blocked and speeds greatly reduced, some videos are trickling out, allegedly of police hitting and shoving young women on the streets. A Norway-based Iran rights NGO estimates that at least 150 people have been killed in the crackdown. The government has vowed to come down hard on the protests and claimed this is an international conspiracy. Bureau Report, NDTV. Now, India has abstained on two key votes as uh, the UN human rights body adopted a resolution on uh, Sri Lanka and uh, also on a UN vote uh, to discuss human rights violations in China. Maha Siddiqui joining us at this point with the latest on that. Maha, what do we know? Uh, well, as far as the issue of China is concerned, this was a report from the uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, who has just ended her tenure. And uh, she had submitted her report, which uh, was a very scathing report on the human rights abuses in Xinjiang, and uh, which had uh, clearly pointed a finger towards uh, how China is treating the Uyghur Muslims in uh, Xinjiang. And uh, it was widely believed that the West would push for a discussion on that report, which is now not going to go ahead because that was defeated uh, by 1719. 17 is to 19 votes and 11 abstentions, out of which India was also one of the countries to have abstained. Uh, we do not know exactly uh, the reasons uh, that India has abstained on this vote because there was no explanation of vote on this. As far as Sri Lanka is concerned, India abstained there as well. 
with regards to uh, the reconciliation process there in Sri Lanka. On that, India did give an explanation of war, saying that even though it's abstaining on this, it will work with the Sri Lankan government, and it finds that the steps taken by the Sri Lankan government towards uh, devolution, towards uh, uh, the 13th Amendment, are not adequate. Maha, thanks so much for joining us with those details.